Michael, can you provide an example of a country that scored higher on the Templeton Global Macro ESG Index, and what factors resulted in that? So I think one of the most relevant to the global macro strategies, given our investments uh, based off of these factors, and what we think is one of the um, most uh, strong examples in a, of an improving ESG score would be Argentina. The projected rate of change in our analysis is going to be one of the highest out there in the world. Um, it comes from what had happened, some would argue a decade, some would argue for decades, of governance and social mismanagement. And it really came to a head, I would say, in the last five years of the previous administration with just uh, really poor scores on a lot of governance issues, uh, manipulation of government statistics, lack of transparency in government contracts, nepotism, corruption, um, a breakdown in social cohesion. And then President Macri was elected, um, you know, uh, a couple of years ago and really on a mandate of change and change away from these poor governance structures, the poor social structures. And it, we have begun to see already in just a couple of years, signs of them improving. But more importantly, we have confidence that this is going to continue. And so uh, things like uh, re-legitimizing the central bank, eliminating price controls, letting the exchange rate you know, fluctuate, giving transparencies in contracts, giving uh, certainty over contracts, decreasing the nepotism, decreasing the corruption, um, man decreasing manipulation of statistics, uh, allowing a business environment that will bring in investment. So there, I think you're really setting the seeds for, for change. And what are the implications? Well, you know, growth's going to be higher, unemployment's going to be lower, inflation's going to be lower, trade's going to improve, investment's going to improve, and that means social welfare of the country will improve. It also means, in parallel, that investment returns will improve. Risk premiums will come down, exchange rates will stabilize or appreciate, and yields will come down. So this is one of those, I think, classic examples where you have a marriage between the sort of social welfare of a country improving and investment returns being highly correlated uh, to that. Now, it will take time. Uh, it's not going to turn around overnight, but we see, you know, some very positive signs. Vivian, on the opposite side of the index, can you highlight a country that maybe scored a bit more poorly? So I think an example of that uh, would be Venezuela. Um, I think we can all agree that Venezuela is in a very challenging situation right now, uh, particularly in regards to the humanitarian crisis that is going on there. But if we look at Venezuela from an ESG perspective, um, I think uh, it's an example of why ESG cannot be ignored um, by investors. Um, so Venezuela did score um, the poorest uh, or in the, our entire sample size um, with a score of zero for governance, um, given the, the you know, disaster that is going on there. Um, but what we think is that the signals for, uh, of deterioration have been there for a long time, the dependence on oil money, the unsustainable social practices. But what we think, you know, what we saw is that eventually um, low ESG scores resulted in um, deteriorating macroeconomic conditions and eventually that which affected asset prices. So bond prices collapsed, you have huge uh, depreciation of the currency and eventually sovereign default. Um, and I think the message is, or the idea is quite clear, um, it's that it's nearly impossible for positive and, and sustainable economic development to occur in such a dysfunctional political environment and amid such uh, social chaos. Um, and the, the lesson for investors, we think, is clear as well, which is that it might take time, um, but ESG performance is eventually going to translate into economic performance.